Hello, welcome to a short reflection on Proverbs 22 as we journey through the book of Proverbs, Wisdom for Life in this month of November, which marks 30 years since my accreditation as a Methodist local preacher, 30 years of preaching. I ask for wisdom every day, and so we've turned to the book of Proverbs um, today. Proverbs 22. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Verse 1. We've already heard a lot in Proverbs about wisdom being finer than gold or silver or rubies or diamonds. A good name, reputation, being esteemed, uh, being well thought of is a precious commodity. I wonder how you reflect upon that in your life. Is that of enough value to you compared to wealth and riches and material possession? Your renown, what people think about you, how people see you, a good name, being esteemed. There's a theme throughout this chapter of rich versus poor. And verse 2 reminds us that the Lord God made us all. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. We were thinking over the last couple of days about weights and measures. Um, and we are equal in the sight of God. And yet the way we live as human beings puts some people ahead of others. Um, and verse 2, I think, is a real... Uh, a real verse of wisdom, whoever we are, wherever we are, however poor, however wealthy, we have one God who made us all and loves us all the same. Um, verse four, humility is the fear of the Lord. Humility gets mentioned a lot in the book of Proverbs. Uh, this is a path of wisdom, a path of humility, recognising our need for God, our need for others, not thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought, not trusting our own judgment on all things, but seeking wise counsel. And the wages or the benefits of humility are riches and honour and life, life in all its fullness. The life that uh, Jesus gives is a life of humility. Think of Jesus's own humility as a servant king. There are pitfalls and snares in the way of the wicked, Verse 6, start children off on the way they should go, and even when they're old, they will not turn from it. Uh, many of us give thanks for the, uh, the upbringing that we've had, and the ethos, and the good example that we've been given. Um, so we pray for parents and grandparents, godparents, um, those who have influence over children and young people. Um, put them on the right track. And even when they're old, they won't turn from it. That's a great promise. Whoever sows injustice reaps calamity, says verse 8. Um, and laziness and adultery and folly lead to destruction, this verse, this chapter says. I was drawn to verse 11. One who loves a pure heart and who speaks with grace will have the king for a friend. How great is that? to have um, the king for a friend. Obviously, um, what was intended when the book of Proverbs was written might be different to how we interpret that today. Certainly, coming fresh from Christ the King Sunday, it's wonderful to know what a friend we have in Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Whoever loves with a pure heart and whoever speaks with grace has the king for a friend. Oh, that's a great verse. Um, verse 16, a reminder of our responsibility. One who oppresses the poor to increase their wealth and one who gives gifts to the rich both come to poverty, i.e. there's nothing in it for us. In fact, it leads to, um, leads to poverty and destruction for us. But that's an interesting uh, reflection, isn't it? Oppressing the poor to increase your wealth or giving gifts to the rich, I guess, to increase your wealth, to get favour from the rich. Both are folly, both lead to poverty. But particularly this oppression of the poor is repeated in verse 22. Do not exploit the poor because they are poor and do not crush the needy, for the Lord will take up their case. 
So that's, you know, the real message for me of Proverbs 22 is our responsibility to care for those who are oppressed, those who are poor, those who are needy. Um, yesterday we were encouraged not to ignore the cries of the poor and the needy and this is about not ex not exploiting or oppressing the poor by the choices we make and the way we live our lives. This is the path of wisdom, a way of living wisely. At the last part of the Pro Proverbs 22 takes us into a little section of, of um, a series of words of wisdom or messages of wisdom and the message is that we pay attention, turn our ears to wisdom, apply our hearts to wisdom, have wisdom ready on our lips. I'm teaching you today, says the writer, so that you may trust in the Lord. Verse 19. Remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Avoid hot-tempered and angry people. Be careful not to get caught in pledges or partnerships that might lead you into poverty. Be careful not to move ancient boundary stones set up long ago. And all who are skilled get to work for the king. I think there's a lot of promise in this chapter and a lot of challenge for us in the way we live our lives in humility, seeking a good name to be esteemed, to be renowned. What for? For not oppressing, not exploiting the poor, showing uh, grace and kindness wherever possible. Proverbs 22, plenty to think about as we walk the way of the Lord, the way of wisdom, wisdom for life. Uh, join me for Proverbs 23 very soon. Take care. God bless you.